Hey you guys, I'm Dr. Lean with Isolator Fitness and as promised, I'm here to continue on with our previous video which told you a little bit about BMR, basal metabolic rate, how to find it, how it fits into your total daily energy expenditure. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about common misconceptions about using that rule for weight loss and how we're gonna suggest that you apply it. So we've all heard it before. I wanna start by discussing the, the idea that you have to subtract 500 calories from your daily diet in order to lose one total pound of body fat per week. Essentially, this rule is stating that 3,500 calorie overall deficit from your week is gonna result in a one pound loss of fat. There's some problems with this. Uh, for one thing, you're not going to lose all weight from just fat. This study that came up with this rule, the 3,500 calorie rule long ago, essentially assumes that all of that weight is from body fat. Studies have shown that you don't require 500 calories per day of a loss to actually lose weight. I suggest that you try two or 300 calories and pull that from your overall total daily energy expenditure first, and then see what happens. I call this minimal effective dosing. You might be surprised to find out you don't need that to subtract that many calories from your total daily intake to lose weight. So try it out for a week, subtract fewer calories, 100, 200, 300, and so forth, and see what happens first. Secondly, we, we talked about the thermic effect of food. Remember, there's three components to total, total daily energy expenditure. There's the thermic effect of food, physical activity, and your BMR. The thermic effect of food can actually be amplified by your food choices. For instance, protein is going to cause your body to work harder to digest the food. It's going to essentially burn more calories digesting it than a calorie of carbohydrate. Now, both carbohydrates and protein are four calories per gram. However, despite being the same calorie content, you're going to work harder to digest four ounces of chicken than you will to digest 140 calories of wheat crackers, a pure carbohydrate, anything of that nature. So that's important to note. Increasing your protein intake and increasing your overall protein calories throughout your entire calorie intake can result in a significantly higher BMR. Thirdly, physical activity is also a good way to increase your total daily energy expenditure and a good way to pull out calories from how many calories you're using to maintain your total weight right now. Many studies have found that high intensity interval training is superior to overall long duration, low load type of exercises. For instance, getting on the treadmill and walking at kind of a low intensity but for a long duration is not as optimal for weight loss as is moving around quickly for a shorter period of time, so therefore intensity is greater than duration. That's important to keep in mind. We'll discuss later an exercise called excessive post-exercise oxygen consumption. Basically, the more oxygen your body uses during exercise and after exercise, the harder it's gonna be for your body to come back down to a resting state. It's gonna use more energy. That's important to note. So remember, intensity is more important than duration. Additionally, resistance training is gonna be a great way to increase your lean muscle mass. Again, remember, more lean muscle mass is gonna equal a higher BMR, meaning you're gonna burn even more calories at rest. To recap, increase your protein, increase your lean muscle mass. Remember, intensity is greater than duration. Don't do too much too fast. Remember minimal effective dosing. You might be surprised to find out you don't need to subtract as many calories from your daily diet as you think you do. I'm Dr. Lane with Isolator Fitness. If you guys have any other questions or we didn't cover anything you wanted to know, shoot us an email or leave a message in the link below and we hope to hear from you.